So guys who've been with me for a while, you're gonna remember that a little while ago, I've done a couple of videos on a brand or, or I think a better description of it is a, a craftsman, a maker called Adams of Yorkshire. I've put links to those up in the corners as always, but just, just hang out here, check this one first and you can check those later. So the first project we did together was this ridiculously long custom belt. And then we moved on to doing a custom watch strap for this LACO. So Adams of Yorkshire is a one-man band. Both these pieces, the belt and the watch strap, they're both made by Seth. So he takes care of the, the designing, the production, everything within Adams of Yorkshire. The whole thing got started with the belt. So Seth dropped me a line on, on Instagram, just saying, hey dude, uh, I'd love to make you something and get your thoughts on it. And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. Then he was like, um, yeah, so what do you want? And I said, okay, just make me a really big, long belt. You see, I'd found this picture here and I really liked the way that the guy was wearing the belt, but I couldn't find a belt that long that's not for a larger person with the holes in the wrong place. So my only real option was to, to get something bespoke. And I learned something from that project. I learned to, to trust the maker, to trust the craftsman. We as the customer might think that we know what we want, but it's the guy that's making the thing that's got all the expertise, all the experience. It's just, he simply knows better. You're not just paying him to make the thing, you're paying him for his experience, his expertise, his knowledge of the materials, the, the options that are available to you. And also like his personal aesthetic, his personal style as a craftsman. I mean, if we take the belt as an example, my first idea was to make the belt quite narrow because I, I wanted to loop it around like this, but, that really wouldn't have worked. It would have just looked floppy and skinny and you don't really want a floppy skinny thing hanging around your crotch. And so when it came to, to doing the watch strap, I really, I took this lesson to heart. All I did is send a picture of the watch. I sent the, the lug width, is that the size that the, the width that the strap had to be? Sent that along and left the rest up to Seth. I see it like this, and I think I put it like this in the previous videos. When you are getting something made especially for you, if you're getting something made bespoke, then you're entering into a relationship with that craftsman. It's, it's not like I'm picking out a ring and sending him flowers. Nothing personal, dude, it's just I'm already taken. But you get to know his style and his aesthetic. You get to know his capabilities. The, the whole relationship becomes reciprocal because he also learns what you're into, your style, your aesthetic, and what he can offer you. And this project in particular is the, the perfect example of that. This didn't come about with me specifically asking for it. It came about with me posting this picture up on Instagram. Then Seth reached out and he was like, hey dude, another collaboration video? And I should state this right now, I want to be completely open and honest with you guys. Like these, these belts, the watch strap and everything, they were collaborations between Seth and I, so I got the product, did a video on it, and like the projects came around like that. And so I told him, I was like, brother, if you can try your hand at making one of these, that would be amazing. And he was just like, yep, leave it with me. And so I just left it with him. Like that was the extent of my input with this whole thing. It was just like, sure, go ahead and go. And a couple of weeks later, this turned up in the mail. Now, I have zero idea what you call this particular style or this particular kind of belt. Maybe one of you guys do. If you do know, it'd be amazing if you could just let me know down in the comments below. And when you're down there, you know, you're gonna be passing the like button, the subscribe button. If, if you do like this video, if you're into it, it'd be amazing if you could drop us a thumbs up. And also, if you're, if you're into leather work, if you're into craftsmanship, if you're into high quality menswear, then consider hitting that subscribe button because we talk about it, a lot about denim for sure, but we also talk a lot about the quality aspects of, of products and of menswear. Okay, back to regular programming. The belt is extremely well made, but I really, I wouldn't have expected anything else from Seth. The leather that he's used is full grain, of course. It's in this beautiful brown tone. And I always find that the mark of a good quality leather is it, it certainly, it's got a heft to it, it's got a weight to it, but it's also got a, a suppleness as well. And this really has that. 
and the, the edges as well. I mean, these are just, they're burnished to perfection. He really must have put some elbow grease into that. And then there's this sort of, this shape here, this, this scallop that runs down to, to a gentle taper. I can only think that that must have been done by hand, but it's done extremely, extremely well. And then over here, we also see, see the stitching, which is, is, is also flawless. And then there's the, the hardware that he's used. I mean, I have seen this kind of belt before, and I've always been tempted to get one, but it was the, the hardware that always turned me off. It was always cheap and tinny. It obviously been stamped out instead of cast, but it's really, it's not the case here. This is like, very, very high quality, very, very solid. Even down to this little sort of, I don't know what you call that, the end piece, the end cap from the, the belt. Anyway, as I said, I've seen enough of Seth's work to know that this was going to be amazing. It's going to be a very well-crafted product. But then here's the tricky thing about making a video about a belt. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a belt. It's a, it's a loop of leather closed by a buckle. There's not too much you can really stretch that out to say and to, to say with that or so i thought it turns out there is something else to say about this particular style of belt whatever whatever it might be called this is the best style and i do mean the best style of belt for somebody like me who's carrying around a, a little bit of corona chub actually it's it's not corona chub it's i'm going to be 14 four months and i like cake and beer chub for me a belt is is way more than just an accessory it's an essentially essentially an essential item an essential accessory i need a belt to keep up my pants i see guys running around wearing no belt and i've got zero idea how their pants stay up like even if i wear a pair of jeans that are two sizes too small I still always, always, always need a belt. Even sometimes with a belt, my ass ends up hanging out. I mean, that happened when we were on holiday with the in-laws and I was grilling and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, mother-in-law. Oh, which one is it? Yep. Yeah. This is my go-to. This is my everyday belt. I've had this for years. It was made by Diamond Goods. It was made of natural veg tanned leather or is made of natural veg tanned leather. It's just patinaed up absolutely beautifully. Then I have Seth's big long belt here. And then I've got another one from, well, I've got another one here from the very aptly named brand for holding up the trousers. And you can see that all three of these belts, they have got one thing in common. All three of these belts have got one thing in common. They're big, wide belts. Skinny belts are just shit. They look strange with a pair of jeans and you don't want a, a skinny, thin piece of leather just digging into your love handles. But the big, wide piece of leather also mean you need a big, wide buckle. It, it makes sense. But that's also the problem. And that problem means that, well, put it this way. I tie my shoes before I buckle my belt. The middle-aged spread does not like a big white buckle. But my, my new belt, my new belt, it solves all of that. You get the best of both worlds. You get this nice, big, wide, thick piece of leather that spreads the load over the parts that need the load to be spread. And then you've got this nice, thin, dainty little buckle here that's, that's very pod friendly. I mean, look, even, even the corners are rounded off. That's just, it's very, very comfortable. I mean, this has meant that I've been kicking off the mules that I've been wearing for the past year, and I still returning to shoes and boots with laces. Even if you are a lean, mean machine, this is still a dope style of belt. It's something a little bit different. I think that's important. It's, it's important to add a little bit of variety into your accessory arsenal. I mean, if you don't do that, if you don't mix things up once in a while, then you end up just wearing a uniform. And that's a trap that I fall into all the time. And this is just a, a good way to, to just kick yourself out of that. So Seth, thank you so much for my dope new belt. Like I really, I really, really love it. And also I, I, there seems to be a war of a building site going on just outside my flat. So if you haven't been able to hear me for this entire video guys, I'm sorry. If this continues, I'm just gonna have to start up a building site AMSR channel. Fucking really, what is that? Okay, that doesn't look like it's gonna be finished anytime soon. It's maybe not the worst thing actually that they're doing some work on the building that's directly, cause it's too bright. But anyway, the building directly across from me 
like a year and a half ago or something, like huge lumps of plaster just fell off one of the buildings on the fifth, fourth, fifth floor. If somebody had been under that, I hope somebody was, I hope nobody was under that, but if somebody had been under that, they, they wouldn't have made it. So I guess they're going to be doing a little bit of renovations and I don't really know how long that's going to take. Okay, interruption over. Actually, it's probably interruption just beginning, but me showing you what the interruption is, is over. Where was I? So I'm saying thank you very much for the amazing bell. I said that right. Uh, guys, if you want one, one like this, if you are wanting one just like this one, then just like hop over to, to Seth's Instagram. I put it up, up here. Actually, it's gonna be much simpler. I put a link to that down below in the description box. So yeah, just you can head over there and check that out. Drop me a DM. Like if you, even if you're not into this bell and you've got another idea about a leather product that you want, then just like start the conversation with him. I, I, I'm quite certain that he can turn his hand to doing a very good job of just about anything within the realms of reality in leather. So yeah, I'd be, actually, if you do that, then just let me know how it goes. Let me know what you ask for. I'd be very curious to see what else he makes for people and what people are really into. Now that's gonna be super cool to know what he comes up with. Right, there seems to have been a lull in the war zone building site out there. So I'm just gonna quickly say this. Guys, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. I hope okay, so much for the lol. Anyway, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. And I'm going to see you in the next video.